the largest number doesn't exist. You can always imagine bigger. And no, infinity is not a number. And even if it was, you can always add a second dimension and make an ordered pair that exceeds infinity. And even if you still persist that infinity is a number, which is not, and apply it as both objects of an ordered pair, you can always widen the pair and make it an n tuple. And if you dare to substitute n with infinity and fill the tuple with infinities, then congrats, you just won an infinity night's stay at Hilbert's hotel. Stop bothering us. But what about the largest numbers that were actually used in published mathematical proofs? Well, they surely exist, but to denote those that are among the largest, we need more powerful operations than multiplication or exponentiation. We need some peculiar maths rules. Let's start from the very boring beginning by defining the operation called successor function. Let's denote it as h0 of a. It simply sends a natural number a to the next one, so h0 of 1 equals 2, h0 of 2 equals 3, and so on. Now let's upgrade to the next level. The addition, denoted as h1 of a and b, can be defined as using successor function on number a repeated b times. So h1 of 3 and 2 can be shown as a h0 of h0 of 3, with h0 being used b times, which is 2 in this case, and h0 of h0 of 3 equals 5. And yes, in everyday life it's just easier to write 3 plus 2 equals 5, instead of pretending to be Santa Claus. I apologize for being so meticulous, but we need this cautious approach for upcoming operations. <laughs> h2 of a and b is better known as multiplication, with number a being added b times. So h2 of 3 and 4 can be rewritten as 3 times 4, or 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3, which is, of course, 12. Then h3 of a and b is then nothing else than exponentiation, h3 of 3 and 4 means 3 to the 4th power, or 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, which equals 81. But can we go with higher operations than h3? Well, you already know the answer, because if it's a no, this episode will end abruptly. But before we tackle h4, let's introduce our title character. Knuff's up arrow notation. As it starts at the exponentiation level of h3, 3 to the 4th can be rewritten as 3 up arrow 4. Now let's talk about h4 or a double up arrow b. If multiplication is stacked addition and exponentiation is stacked multiplication, then h4 is stacked exponentiation. So h4 of a and b is a to the power of a, and this power to the power of a, and so on, b times. So h4 of 3 and 3 is 3 double up arrow 3, which is 3 up arrow 3 up arrow 3, which equals 3 to the third power, and this third power to the third power, which is 3 to the 27th power, which is uh, that much. But why stop there? What about h5, called pentation? What is free triple up arrow free? Well, pentation acts as stacked power towers. So let's solve free triple up arrow free. It is free double up arrow free double up arrow free. We already know that 3 double up arrow 3 is, okay, I'll say it, 7 trillion, 625 billion, 597 million, 484,987. Ugh, let's call this number pop. 
So free double up arrow bob is nothing else than free to the third power and this to the third power and this to the third power and the number of those third powers here is bob. If you want to calculate the exact value of this monstrosity, also known as super bob, go ahead, I won't do it. Instead, let's talk H6, called Hexation. And the example of free, quadruple up arrow, free. If super bob isn't problematic enough, what does free, quadruple up arrow, free, actually mean? Why do we stray further and further away from Jesus? What is existence? When did the life on earth start? What on earth is stacking stacked power towers? 3 quadruple up arrow 3 equals 3 triple up arrow 3 triple up arrow 3, which is 3 triple up arrow super bob, which is 3 double up arrow 3 double up arrow 3 double up arrow with super bob freeze inside, for which I need a break and help in form of another notation. Let's go back to A, double up arrow, B. Let's write it now as power B and base A, a so-called tetration tower. In this fashion, A, triple up arrow B could be rewritten as power A, power A, power A, and base A, B times. So 3, quadruple up arrow 3 equals this power tower of tetration tower, a number which we call your mom. Of course, this abnormal insanity of arrows could be prolonged by adding one after another, but your mom is already scary, so let's stop here for a moment. Because your mom isn't so random as you may think. Your mom is a vital part of Graham's number, a number that held a Guinness World Record for the biggest number ever used in a mathematical proof for some time. But what exactly is Graham's number? It's a number way too big to comprehend, but it can be concisely defined by recursive formula. For that, we need to get rid of your mom and rename free quadruple up arrow free as g1. Then, for every positive integer larger than 1, gn equals free, gn minus 1 number of up arrows, free. As we now are fully aware, G1 is already a troublesome number to imagine. But what about G2, which has that many up arrows as G1 value? We, the maths peasants, don't really have any concepts to grasp how many times is G2 bigger than G1. If G1 is as big as a grain of sand, G2 is way, way bigger than observable universe. And what about next numbers then? G3, G4, G5. Okay, this episode is already way too long, so let me finally present you Graham's number, G64. Let me say this again, G64. For what is this devilish number used? Take a square and all its edges and diagonals. We have two colors available, let's say blue and red. And our task is not to color those lines with just one color. So we just choose one line, make it blue and make red the rest, for example. But let's add a dimension and ask, what about the cube? Here the task becomes that each available square with diagonals should not be colored with just one color. It's a bit more difficult to show, but still fairly easy to do. So 2D square is easy, 3D cube is easy, 4D tesseract is still fairly easy, although visuals may be illegible here. But is this task doable for a hypercube with any number of dimensions? No. Ok, so when this task becomes impossible? We're still not sure. However, in 1977, mathematician Martin Gardner presented a Graham's proof that concluded with precise obscurity. 
the upper bound for the given problem is Graham's number. And although today the slightly stronger bounds for the problem are proved, G64 remains as one of my favorite numbers ever from the minute I've learned about it, due to its definition's elegance and yet a truly, truly incomprehensible size at the same time. All thanks to Knuff's upper rotation, modest and astonishing at the same time. If you're driven by curiosity like me, you can click in the middle to learn about the shortest war in history. Anyway, thank you for watching and have a nice day.